you know that you can access your Visual Studio subscriptions in a couple of ways? The first way you might be used to is with a Microsoft account or MSA. The other way you might have heard about is what are referred to as work accounts, which are set up through Office 365 or Azure Active Directory. These are also known as managed tenants. We'll go through both of these options in detail so you can understand the choices made by your organization and if you need to make any changes. What is a Microsoft account or MSA? The MSA is a personal email account owned by an individual to access Microsoft services when an organization is not using a managed tenant for O365 or Azure Active Directory. An MSA is set up by the individual and maintained by the individual. For example, Benny may have set up benny.ingles at outlook.com as his Microsoft account. This would be owned, maintained, and created by him. Why would I need an MSA? Companies use MSAs when they're not yet using managed services by Microsoft, such as Office 365 or Azure Active Directory, or if they're using managed services from other companies. For example, Benny Ingalls may have been assigned a subscription by his company, Contoso. His administrator may have assigned it to his company email, benny.ingalls at contoso.com. However, in order for him to access his subscription, he needs to connect it to a Microsoft account. Since Benny.Ingles at Contoso.com is owned and managed on-premises by Contoso, a Microsoft account needs to be created to access his subscription. Why does this matter? Since MSAs are owned by an individual, if the individual is no longer with the company, they can still access services that are connected to their identity. For example, if Cole Behringer used coleberringer one at Outlook.com to assign Visual Studio subscriptions and manage administrators, he would still be able to do this even after he leaves the company if his account is not removed from the portal. Cole owns this email address and will continue to own it even after he leaves. This can pose a major security risk to your company if the user maintains unauthorized access to confidential information. Is it possible for a Microsoft account to be a business account? As of September 2018, you can no longer create a Microsoft account out of a business email address that is backed by Azure Active Directory, also known as Azure AD. This prevents an overlap of both an organization and an individual user owning the same email address. For example, Sheila could have an email address assigned to her by your company such as Sheila at Contoso.com. Sheila also could have taken this email address and set it up on her own as a Microsoft account if her company does not have a restricted domain. This means that even if Sheila left Contoso, if she'd used that email address as a Microsoft account to sign into other services, such as Visual Studio subscriptions, that would still be her user sign-in. Effective September 2018, new users at Contoso will not be able to set up their Contoso email addresses as Microsoft accounts if the email domain already exists in Azure AD or Office 365. What can I do about it? You may want to consider transitioning your users to a managed tenant, such as Azure Active Directory or Office 365. What is a managed tenant? A managed tenant is a cloud-based directory that allows the organization to have end-to-end -end control over the user's access to Microsoft services. This can be achieved in a couple of ways through both hybrid or full cloud solutions such as Office 365. The organization has full control of the email address and can control access this way. Why does this matter? Unlike with using MSAs, Managed tenants allow for increased governance and full control over a user's access. For example, if Cole Behringer uses cole at contoso.onmicrosoft.com to assign Visual Studio subscriptions and manage administrators, if he leaves the company, then as soon as his email address is deactivated, he no longer has access to sensitive or confidential information. Cole also doesn't have the task of setting up and maintaining his own email account as he would with an MSA, and he's also not able to use it as a sign-in email address for other non-work-related services. Since the sign-in and security for Cole's email address is within Office 365 and entirely in the control of his company, 
Once his account is deactivated, he loses access to cloud services. How to manage tenants make Visual Studio subscription management easier? The Visual Studio Subscriptions Administration Portal will recognize all your users and be able to track the status of their email accounts. This is helpful because the system will identify when a person's account is deactivated and block access to the subscription. However, the subscription will still be listed in the Visual Studio Subscriptions Administration Portal until it is removed by the administrator. This makes subscriptions management easier since there is one less step that an administrator needs to take to manage unauthorized access. If you're already on a managed tenant, make sure your users are not using MSAs by looking at their sign-in email address. For information about this topic, watch our video at aka.ms forward slash MSA sign-in. Still have questions about how this works? Check out Manage Tenants on Office 365 or Azure at aka.ms forward slash AAD domain. To stay up to date on the Microsoft Identity Strategy, be sure to monitor the Identity Management blog at aka.ms forward slash identity MGMT.